expected. Hi everyone, I'm Gretchen Carlson. This is The Real Story. Iran detaining 10 U.S. Navy sailors in the Persian Gulf. The State Department and Vice President Biden denying reports. The U.S. apologized to secure their release, but now we have video released by the Iranian state TV that appears to show the commander of the U.S. sailors doing just that, apologizing. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin live at the Pentagon. So Jennifer, in the end, did this U.S. sailor apologize to the Iranians? Well, it seems so, Gretchen. We now have video of the captain of the crew apologizing in a video clip that was released, as you mentioned, by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard online, a clear violation of the U.S. military code of conduct, which says, I will give name, rank, and serial number, and evade giving further questions to the best of my ability. It was a mistake. That was our fault, and we apologize for our mistake. The Iranian behavior was fantastic while we were here. We thank you very much for your hospitality and your assistance. I didn't have a special problem. We had no problem, sir. The State Department and others denied the administration apologized. No, there's no apology. There's nothing to apologize for. When, when, you, when you have a problem with the boat, you apologize the boat had a problem? No, there, and there was no looking for any apology. State Department spokesman John Kirby added, quote, nothing to apologize for. The U.S. sailors are currently undergoing medical observation in Bahrain, Gretchen. Yeah, there's going to be a ton of questions because now we have the video. I mean, albeit he may have been coerced, but the words that come out of his mouth, he said it was a mistake, I apologize, and that they had no problems there. We're going to get to more of that in a moment, but where are these sailors right now? Well, right now, they were released by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards at 3.43 this morning, Eastern Time, after about 24 hours in captivity. This video released by the state television shows them surrendering. The Iranians rifled through their American passports and inspected the weapons on board before being allowed to leave in the same two riverine boats that reportedly had technical malfunctions the day before. The American sailors were met by the USS Anzio, a cruiser that is part of the USS Harry Truman, strike group. The nine male and one female sailor were taken back to Bahrain. The ships continued on their original course south to Bahrain with a new crew in order to float into Iranian waters. If that is what happened, the sailors had to be about 50 miles off course, Gretchen. All right. Uh, we're going to continue on this now, Jennifer. Thank you. For real talk, let's bring in Ambassador John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Fox News contributor. Ambassador, this is a huge twist in this story. Because now we have this video, we think it's the captain, saying that the U.S. made a mistake, we're sorry, uh, we've had no problems with Iran. Did the United States actually have the ability to tell him to say that, or what do you think happened? Well, I don't think we know a lot about this story from start to finish, and in particular, the circumstances of that apology. Uh, it, it didn't look like duress in the sense he had a gun to his head when he said it, but we don't know what happened off camera. I think it was a mistake in any event, but that's a conversation separately. I think, unfortunately, the consequence, why, whatever reason he did what he did, the consequence is that Iran has a huge propaganda victory. Inside Iran today, they are broadcasting that they caught the Americans red handed they arrested them uh, basically found that they were spying on Iran uh, and have now released them which of course for the soft heads in the West allows them to say it's just wonderful that the Ayatollahs have released these people now we can go on right. for the nuclear deal well but the fact is I think what they were really after was they got the propaganda that was that was kind of an extra bonus they got the boats they were able to look over these boats, which I, I'm willing to bet were uh, intelligence gathering. That was one of their missions, among others. Very sensitive communications equipment, possibly the weapons on the boat, the sensors that may be there, the dimensions of the boat themselves, a whole range of things that uh, they didn't right. need to bring the, the, the well, crews and the ships but, to but, land. They but, could have just turned them away. There are so many elements to this story, though, because you're right. We had Secretary Kerry, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, the White House coming out and saying, isn't this glorious? Because the fact of the matter that we've been having discussions with Iran is exactly why they released these sailors so quickly. But, but the heart of the matter is, what did they get? And by the way, these sanctions are supposed to go away uh, in a matter of weeks now. And yeah. apparently Iran lived up to some end of its bargain, so it could happen even earlier. So are we going to see more displays like this with Iran tweaking us? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I predicted that after they signed the Vienna deal that Iran would be on their best behavior for six or eight months to be absolutely sure that the assets were unfrozen and the sanctions lifted. In fact, they've been, they've been insulting us uh, for six months, firing ballistic missiles in violation of UN sanctions, firing uh, missiles near American ships, this incident, the visa uh, waiver issue. Uh, and what it all goes to show is they are building a structure, a mentality of appeasement in Washington. Mm -hmm. the, the Iranians seize these two ships. They show pictures of our uh, personnel with their hands behind their heads Surrender as if they're under position. arrest. And, and John Kerry says they were treated well. I mean, okay. this is, you now have the administration acting as lawyers for the Iranians. All right, I want to bring to your attention, I'm sure you know about this, the Code of Conduct for members of the United States Armed Forces. It says in Article 5... Uh, I will evade answering further questions to the utmost of my ability. I will make no oral or written statements disloyal to my country and its allies are harmful to their cause. So this is the code of conduct for any of those sailors on those boats. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that, I, mean, I don't know what they did, if it was right or wrong, but this is the code of conduct. Obviously, they don't want to end up in Evan prison, the worst of the worst, in uh, Iran. But that is a code of conduct. So do you have any information about how something like this would play out, Ambassador? Would they have had a chance to talk to the Pentagon? I don't think so. It looks to me like they were held basically in isolation. And I, I think, as I say, it was mostly to give the Iranians 8, 10, 12 hours to scour those two boats and get every piece of information uh, that they could. And, and these films were bonuses. But let me just say, if you treated these uh, naval personnel as prisoners under the Geneva Convention, uh, they, they are not supposed to be interviewed by the press. Uh, that is an abuse of their status as prisoners. So the Iranians have treated this as a propaganda opportunity. They've, they've reaped everything they could expect to get out of it. It only would have been downside for them to hold these personnel uh, any longer. And uh, it looks to me like they, they really have uh, scored an enormous propaganda victory. And it will just encourage the administration to say, let's lift the sanctions. What cooperation from the Iranians? They're, they're looking at the well, world through rose-colored glasses. Maybe, yes, but this apology could put a snag in in that. Uh, we're going to continue to follow this throughout The Real Story. Ambassador, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys. Let's go to politics for a minute and the race for the White House.